The American Italian Cultural Center and Museum on South Peters in New Orleans offers event venue space, Italian language classes, dual citizenship and translation services, seminars, genealogy, and trips to Italy. Ciao! AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area. Steppin' Out is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. It happens here each week. We step out and enjoy our region's events and rich culture. We are proud to support WIES. Roll camera. Scott Laborde and welcome to Step It Out with updates from the local restaurant arts and entertainment scenes. Joining me, Poppy Tooker, host of Louisiana Eats on WWNO Radio. Hey, Miss hey. Poppy, we're in red. It looks it's great. It's the season. Hey, she's back. Gwen Tompkins, host for the WWNO Radio program, Music Inside Out, also podcast too. Welcome back, dear. Thank it's you great so to much see for having you. me. Thank you. Alan Mason, Hello. editor of the Crescent City <laughs> Jewish News and TheaterCriticism.com. Hi. Hi. And making his debut, I'm so glad, Bob <laughs> Becker. He's now the retired former CEO and for a long time, over 20 years of City Park, and he has a beautiful brand new book talking about those experiences. Welcome. Thank you, Peg. Hello. And Poppy, we're still in the merriment mood. Oh, we are. <laughs> and I'll tell you exactly where to go and get very merry these days. <laughs> Chef Chris Borges, who perhaps you fell in love with his work when he was at the Josephine Estelle, incredibly talented chef. He's now the chef at the Commons Club at the Virgin Hotel. Mm -hmm. And I think locals forget how good the dining is at some of our hotels, and this is one of them. So I'm talking Christmas, New Year's Eve, they've got you covered. Um, as a matter of fact, I, there's a picture coming up soon where I have a little Christmas suggestion for you. Oh, there's Chef Chris Borges, and the, every place is decorated so beautifully, but maybe you don't have a date for New Year's Eve. Maybe you don't want to be alone for Christmas. Well, the bunny man is waiting for you right there in the funny library. Oh. And I'll tell you, I'd like a date with the bunny man, but anyhow, Chef Chris, his all new menu is off the hook. His scallop crudo, it was one of the most delicious scallop Ooh. dishes I've ever had. He has lamb, meatballs, and spaghetti, and what? He's a New Orleans boy, so he serves it in a red gravy, and that red gravy is so lamby. There are the beautiful short ribs. There's swordfish. My big pick is the Iberico pork flank. Mm. Look at that, mm. and what's underneath the pork is Louisiana crab dirty rice, the best version of that dish I have ever eaten. I could have had a bowl of just that. And there's so many unusual things. Roasted hearts of palm. You don't ever see that on a menu. Anyway, there's for New Year's Eve, he's serving a la carte. There'll be specials on the second floor of the Virgin. There's going to be live music and a party between uh, 8 p.m. and 1 a.m. And then up on the rooftop, a really fun place to be is the pool club and the dreamboat lounge where there'll be... Mm. A DJ and cocktails, 8 until 1 a.m. And speaking of cocktails, if you're not ready for New Year's Eve and you're still really in the Christmas spirit, well, you've got a few more days to go enjoy the Miracle Pop-Up at Barrel Proof. Mm -hmm. It is, uh, every inch is decorated. Every cocktail is just <laughs> off the hook. But let me tell you what, often there's long lines at the Miracle Pop-Up. This is their fifth year, believe it or not. 
So if the line's too long, let me suggest that you cross the street and go to the Bowers Ba Humbug Pop-Up Bar. <laughs> they've got a little miracle going on right Major over there Bible. with things like their Manger Baby Margarita. Oh, okay. And so it's a fun place to go do both of them. Do the miracle and then do Ba Humbug. <laughs> but if you're still trying to figure out about New Year's Eve, I do have a crazy suggestion. The Vintage Rock Club, which is over walk-ons on Poydras, there's no cover. Um, you can just walk in, I'm told, 9 p.m. until 2 a.m. Mm. If you do want a table or a sofa, you can go online and reserve one. But that's just going to be a big old wild party right there on Poydras <laughs> Street. So, yippee! Merry, merry, and happy, happy. All right. Thank you so much. And Gwen, I asked you, and I, I have so appreciated you accomplishing this goal. <laughs> if you were going to step out over the, la the next few days, where would you go? Well, well, there are plenty of places, actually, Peggy. It's incredible. Um, you know, this is the time of year when you, you not only are with the people that you love, but you want to be around things that lift your soul. And so, music does that and there's plenty of it in the coming days actually Friday I think I may be the only person who's never seen the movie Elf <laughs> <laughs> but um, but the LPO the Louisiana Philharmonic is playing the live score of Elf to the film at the Sanger actually and that's gonna be Friday night at 7 o'clock and there's actually a matinee on uh, Saturday at 1 so if you are interested you might see me there so that's at um, the Sanger as opposed to the orphan where mm -hmm. they are they hang out most of the time that's so exactly right yeah, yeah they're at the Sanger this time and um, and so it's a lovely thing to do um, with your family actually on a Friday or on a Saturday and we all know of uh, the saxophone player and multi-instrumentalist uh, Charlie Gabriel from Preservation Hall he's uh, the senior member of the band the touring band but he plays all kinds of jazz and soul and R&B and world music and he is going to be appearing with the Larry Seaborth trio at uh, Snug Harbor on Friday and that's going to be um, uh, two shows, one at 7.30 and one at 9.30. And the beauty of Charlie Gabriel is that not only is he a fantastic player, mm -hmm. but even though he's the eldest member, and I mean 90 plus, <laughs> yeah, you know, okay. yes, this you would know, be he accurate. was the one who introduced uh, the, the band to uh, writing their own material in recent years, recording their own material, new uh, modern uh, recording techniques. I mean, this guy is really fa fast, forward, fast forwarding a lot of traditions in New Orleans, and he just sounds wonderful um, with uh, Larry Seaberth. So please um, think about going. And then also, if you love uh, brass band music on Friday night, the Stooges are celebrating their 20th anniversary. And that's going to be over at the Rabbit Hole on uh, uh, Friday at 9. On Saturday, uh, December 23rd, there's another excellent daytime opportunity. And this is going to be in um, the French Quarter. And that's aside from Elf, of course. Um, and it's the Creole Christmas show mm. at Preservation Hall, featuring Wendell Brunius, you know, who has got that oh, beautiful so caramel nice. tone, both in his trumpet as and well as well as and in his singing nice voice. Guy. <gasps> he nice is guy. delightful. Personality. And talk about uh, just a font of history. That man can look at a photograph and identify everyone from 1924 in that photo. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> I've seen it happen. Um, and so he's going to be doing these shows in the afternoon at Preservation Hall at 2:30 and 3:45. Mm. This is the Creole uh, Christmas and. And then um, for the rest of the evening, they're, they're uh, featuring uh, the wonderful King of Treme, Treme, you know, drummer Shannon Powell, mm. and he's going to be performing uh, at 5, 6, 15, 7, 30, and 8, 45. So you can actually spend the whole day and evening at Preservation Hall if you like. Um, Alan Toussaint, you know, he once told me that um, Philip Manuel is um, mm. in his top, t was in his top tier of the best singers of, in New Orleans. And uh, Philip Manuel doesn't perform a whole lot anymore in town, mm. but he's performing performing on Saturday evening at Snug Harbor, 7.30 and 9.30. And, um, you know, I'm, I think I might try to make it out there, actually, because he's just he's just got, again, like Brunius, a wonderful tone and a beautiful swinging, um, swinging style. Uh, also for Saturday night, this is an up-and-coming performer who I saw not, a, not, not that long ago, maybe a couple of weeks. His name is George Brown. I don't know if you, what a prosaic name, right? George <laughs> Brown. But this guy is young. He's He's got a sly stone feel to him. He's fantastic. And his band, the George Brown Band, is actually going to be playing on, um, 
on uh, Saturday night at the Blue Nile on Frenchman Street um, at 7 and 11. And he's playing along with Chris Cotton, a Grammy-winning trumpet mm -hmm. player who's got a birthday bash going at the same night, as well as Gene's Music Machine and more. And I think it's going to be really fun, especially <laughs> if you have young people around who love to dance and have a good time and you want to get rid of them. <laughs> <laughs> For the evening, tell them to go on over to the Blue Nile and see the George Brown uh, band and just remember his name. He's really something. And then on Christmas Eve, I know a lot of people like to stay home, but if you would like to, to go out and um, experience some wonderful Christmas music, try Robin Barnes mm. over at the mm. Ace Hotel. Mm. She's going to be uh, doing a um, soulful Christmas. with. It's going to be with uh, Robin Barnes and friends. She's a delightful personality. She's got an incredible range. Her voice is amazing, mm. her vocal range. And uh, you'll be, it's the, the show starts at 8, and you can be home in time to, you know, do, you know, put out your cookies for Santa or do whatever you like to do on a Saturday <laughs> night, you know. And uh, and then on Christmas Day, you'd think that there would be no uh, live music, but George Porter Jr. is having a birthday party. Uh, he's turning 76. Wow. He's having a birthday party on Christmas evening uh, at uh, the Maple Leaf. Mm. And, uh, you know, he's just the best of the best. Every, you know, every major uh, a musician worldwide knows his name and knows his base. And, uh, and so that show is going to begin, I believe, at 7.30. Mm -hmm. um, at least, uh, let me make sure. No, no, if there's, that show is going to be at 7 and 10. Sorry about that. And then on Boxing Day, right? Um, Papa, you went all the way through New Year's Eve, but I tell you, I can only get you to Boxing Day. And, um, and that is uh, Monday, oh, Tuesday, and it's going to be the Trumpet Mafia, which <laughs> is uh, one of the best groups. It's a fluid group, a dynamic group of trumpet players around New Orleans who get together, and they have toured the world, actually. And they're fantastic. It's run by a guy by the name of Ashlyn Parker, who was a staple in Ellis Marsalis' band, as well as a wonderful teacher. He teaches over at Tulane now. He teaches orchestra. He's phenomenal. And he tells his Tulane students, look, if you can't name five musicians in New Orleans who play your instrument, then you're not a musician. Yeah, I you love know. it. I love that too. <laughs> Thank so. you so much, Gwen. Okay. And Bob, congratulations, because, uh, and I love the title of the book, New Orleans City Park from Tragedy to Triumph. And of course, so many people live through Katrina, so we know what the tragedy is, and I'm sure there are others too, but to Triumph. How, how did you go about putting together something like this? Because, I mean, the, the history of City Park alone is daunting, isn't it? Yeah, uh, there's uh, been several books written that really show the history of the of the park, and I wanted to cover the last 20 years that I was at, at yeah. the at Reeves the park. book, this uh, Bill Be and Sally Reeves. Yes, and, the yeah. Bi Bill and Sally Reeves book. And, and so I started in 2001, uh -huh. and Katrina hit, of course, in in 2005, and uh, the park was devastated as a result of that, and it took uh, years for us to recover. And but there were so many people who contributed. Uh, to it, and when I began to look at the photographs that we had, and that's where we're going to show some incredible photos. Yeah, along I, with I began to go through all the all, all the photographs mm -hmm. in, in in the late, later years, and I realized that um, there was an incredible story here about uh, the park and resiliency and rejuvenation and uh, all the things that we did to come back, including you know having a celebration in the Oaks in that 2005 December, which mm -hmm. we were able to to pull off. Um, and look this at a, this. This oh. is a picture showing the, the, the park in 2005. You can barely see the helicopter in the, kind of the lower left corner there, but President Bush was in that uh, helicopter, thanks to David Grunfeld, the Times-Picayune, for, mm. for, for that photo. So we started pretty, mm. pretty low. And many people, I don't know that any, I don't know this photograph has ever been seen, of the people who camped out in the park. These were contractors who were trying to uh, come into the city to restore, to be being paid to restore uh, areas of the city. There was no place for them to be, so they camped out uh, in, in, in the park. And uh, there's a great story in the book about how we tried to collect rent from, <laughs> from, them, <laughs> uh, from them in the, in the, uh -huh. in the park. Uh, so the, the book has, you know, great photographs of uh, of the devastation of the park, but also some, some great photographs. And some great news here. And, uh, of oh. All the new things that we did in the park and were able, able to recover. This is our... Uh, uh, tennis complex, one of the finest First complexes uh, in the South that uh, that was built, but <clears throat> all of the improvements that 
uh, that that we did, uh, ending, of course, in wildflowers. And wasn't this your idea? I mean, I it know was. it's very much of a team uh, effort, but I love this, just planting wildflowers along Marconi, or I guess that's still Orleans, that more of Central Marconi. And so many families go out there and, and take their pictures. You know, Peg, it's pictures. so interesting. So we so spent dear. nearly $200 million restoring the park, Children's Museum, Big Lake, you know, uh, miniature golf, investments in the garden. And when I, when I go out, many people stop and say, we love those wildflowers, <laughs> you know. Those wildflowers are, are, are and terrific. And Storyland. I mean, Why the, didn't the I do list. that you know, a long time ago? <laughs> it's, it's, but uh, it, the list is long. I, I also appreciate your, your sort of honesty because the way you go through in some of the chapters, it's like, well, this worked. This didn't really work, you know, and and just what was going the process, the mental process of of ma ma managing one of America's largest parks. Yeah, yeah. I think this is one of the most unique books that's really ever been written about a public entity and on a long term basis, twenty years, and trying to recover from both natural disasters like Katrina, but uh, man made disasters like COVID. People really don't think how oh. difficult COVID was mm -hmm. when the governor shut down you know, the economy of the, uh, of the state shut down our, our, our economy. But the book goes through and tries to talk about that. And it also, at the end of the book, tries to talk about the lessons, you know, lessons that we've learned that uh, people who come after us uh, will have to take uh, heart in uh, because, you know, disasters occur. They occur on a pretty regular basis. And uh, you have to be prepared for that. And I think the, the book does a very good job of of talking about how recovery can be done and how resiliency can be done and how you can prepare. And then, uh, and then, it uh, talks about the lessons. Well, Bob, two big things, of course. The fact that you all had a master plan in place, and then when FEMA, or when you get, knocked on FEMA's door, and a lot of people, of course, are not fans of FEMA, but City Park certainly was able to to garner <laughs> attention from FEMA. And and they were yeah. based there. Weren't, weren't, wasn't uh, you offered them space? FEMA came, uh, 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 and, and put up shop for a while, yeah. as, as did the National Guard, as yeah. did, you know, campers <laughs> right, and right. A, a, every, everybody else. But did you charge them rent? I, I, <laughs> we didn't charge FEMA rent. We were glad FEMA were there, you know, right? We, yeah. they, were, they were a little slow, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little slow. For the yeah. first six months, we only had a check of $6,500 from FEMA to recover <gasps> for six months. Oh, Eventually, man. they did yeah. come They did come through. But having that plan, <laughs> that was okay, critical. it was very, very critical. critical. Anyway, yeah. congratulations. Well, thank you so uh, much. It's, 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 of course, well written, but it's, it's beautiful too. Yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's Pelican. A, we should give our friends yeah, Pelican, Pelican publishing do. publish the book, and yeah. it's uh, it's almost a coffee table. And book. Available at all fine it's local bookstores and, and national bookstores and, on Amazon. Okay. <laughs> anywhere you above. get your reading material. Absolutely, thank you. And on to Alan. So Peggy, the very good friends of Eddie Cox and Vatican Loki. That's sprinkles and tinsel. <laughs> the crazy elves that are associated <laughs> with Santa. They've teamed up with lots of people from the Big Easy. And the Big Apple, in order to present their very merry Holly Days special. This is going to be on YouTube. Uh, Sprinkles and Tinsel have been doing this for several years, and uh, it's out part of their NOLA voice talent group. And they do it at no cost for everybody. You can now attend, as I said, uh, via YouTube. Uh, joining them this year will be none other than our own first lady of the New Orleans stage, oh. Janet Shea, Yay. who will be spreading her own brand of Christmas cheer. And then the entire production was taped, of course, uh, at uh, at Rivertown. We've got Ashley Smetherman Lemler, oh. who will be on hand to avail us with a song or two, along with sprink uh, Sprinkles and Tinsel. And, and again, uh, Gary <laughs> Rucker, as I mentioned, uh, on the left, uh, uh, saw to it that Rivertown was the place where they taped this. It's made possible by them. Uh, there's Nathaniel Richard here, who recently played John Hinckley Jr. in Assassins at Rivertown. And uh, uh, this may become, Peggy, a big holiday tradition. Maybe like for you and me, Mr. Bingle, the new Mr. Bingle of the new generation. So we'll see. Uh, if they ask me to read a poem next year, you know, I'll do that. Okay. The answer would definitely <laughs> be yes. <laughs> so Sprinkles and Tinsel's Very Merry Holiday Special. It starts on uh, the Friday and it's at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time. They keep saying Central Daylight Time, but I think it's Central Standard Time. And uh, again, hopefully you'll check that out. Now, last week on our show, Marjorie Schrammel was on to promote the New Orleans Ballet Theater's production of The Nutcracker by Tchaikovsky. And I want everybody to remember, they still have a couple of, of shows left. So the last three showings, in fact, are happening tomorrow and Saturday. So if you can make a 2 o'clock matinee on either day or an evening performance on Saturday night, go to the Orpheum box office and get your tickets while you can. 
Also, a reminder of other Christmas things happening. Chip Davis, along with the Mannheim Steamroller, are going to be in town at the Sanger Theater on uh, December the 27th. You will not want to miss this super new age spectacular. Uh, they're really wonderful. If you've never heard them, you will be enthralled by their music. And then, as the old year gives way to the new year, we'll turn our attention wow. to some very highly anticipated shows. This is Lance Nichols and Zardis Nichols. And Lance, by the way, is recovering right now. He's in New Zealand, but he's he's had a little bit of a of a health challenge. But he's oh, fine. He oh says he he got uh, brought in. They they were celebrating their honeymoon in Fiji. So we want to wish him a a, a very speedy recovery. Uh, in any event, uh, they're going to be involved in a wonderful production of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. And remember, this is going to be directed by Tommy Myrick. And you you may recall a few years ago they attempted to put this same kind of production on with a cast of color, diverse casting, and they were not allowed to. Now they can. The Edward Albee estate has sanctioned this, so it's going to be wonderful. Also joining them will be Jarrell Hamilton on the cast as well. So that show will be beginning its previews on January the 11th. Opening night, however, will be the next night on Friday on January the 12th. And on that same night, January the 12th, Rich Arnold will be directing his <laughs> Big Easy Boys and Babes uh, in their latest homage to New Orleans music and the artists uh, who made it popular at the Rivertown Theaters for the Forming Arts. That's going to be live on Lloyd Price. Avenue, which is, of course, a reference to the late, great Lloyd Price, who was indeed a native of Kenner, and so a past honoree of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. We want to make sure you all see that, the Big Easy Boys, and, and there is a very uh, interesting for me, a very uh, special homage to my mother, who is a promoter uh, of music in New Orleans, so if you want to see a picture of my mom, she's going to be in the show, too. All right. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and a more recent addition to the local Christmas music list is Cyril Neville, with his Christmas scene in New Orleans. Here's an excerpt from the music video. It's Christmas time, the weather's fine in New Orleans. Grab mistletoe and some snow is in your dreams. A second line would be just right instead of silent night. That's the scene at Christmas time in New Orleans. Holiday songs playing on my radio. Oh, children sleep and I know they dream. Oh, the gifts they will receive. That's the scene at Christmas time. Rolling. Well, we got gifts to wrap, friends to meet. Show off your outfit on the street. Take your son and your daughter down to the French Quarter. Climb up the stairs. Oh, that's a taste. You can view the entire video online on the Valley Entertainment Channel on YouTube. And now time for our Picks of the Week. Poppy! Another New Year's Eve idea. Maybe you've got middle schoolers. Maybe you've got kids for New Year's. 11 a.m. till 2 a.m., Go bowling <laughs> at Fulton Alley. <laughs> They're open that to whole two a.m. Oh, yeah, wow, so wow. you know if you you can have noon time New Year's uh -huh. Eve and midnight too. My goodness, Gwen, I love that. Um, <laughs> well, the be one of the best shows that's around actually is going to happen again on Boxing Day, and it's at the uh, Bayou Bar at Pontchartrain Hotel. It features Peter Harris and what he calls the OGs, which is uh, is an ensemble that features David. Torkanowski, Tony DeGrotti, and Jameson Ross. They are fantastic together. It is a show that you don't want to miss. All right. Uh, Bob, if someone wanted to have you come to their club or organization and talk about the book, how might they contact you? <laughs> well, they might contact me at bobwbecker at gmail.com. Okay. Or they can call Pelican Publishing. Oh, call Pelican Publishing, And they too. will arrange it as well. It sounds very good. Alan. You know, just an aside, uh, you mentioned the Bayou Bar. I was there the other night. I decided I had had to have dessert and I had a mile high pie. So you did. they still do that. Oh. You know? 
It's a little good. thinner than I'm the originals, so but yeah. Uh, I wanted to remind everybody about the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra. You know, we're we're going to be uh, you know doing some shows, special shows, uh, of course, uh, before the new year, and then when we come back on that day on January the fourth, Matthew Kramer will be picking up his baton and leading the Louisiana Philharmonic Orchestra in a number of classical works, including the very popular Brandenburg Concerto Number no. Three. That'll be at the New Marini Theater. That's on Marray Street uh, in uh, that area that that's being really well developed. It's, it used to be a church. You'll yeah. love it over there. Near Beautiful. Near St. Rock yeah. Market. Yes. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. so uh, I hope that everybody will go out there and check it out because uh, you don't get to hear the Brandenburg perform much anymore. And All so right. I'll see you at the theater. Thank you. And now my picks. This has been another amazing year for New Orleans native John Batiste. And he will be the featured performer at a special concert recorded at the Governor's Mansion in Baton Rouge by LPB. An evening at the Governor's Mansion premieres Friday evening at 9 here on WYES and repeats on Christmas Eve at 5 p.m. and again on December 30th at 5 p.m. on our station, as well as the WYES and PBS apps. Some last-minute Christmas shopping, some suggestions. Burke Bischoff, who used to be with us at WYES, has a great little book out. What a good stocking stuffer. It's Poor Boys. It's the history of poor boys. And I'm going to hold this up just to show you. It really is a stocking stuffer. <laughs> it's a nice, concise history. It's very well done. And Dr. Quinn Peeper and Michael Harold have assembled. What a book! It's very lavish. It's a book of party planning ideas, of course, with a New Orleans -y touch. It must be 10 pounds, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> it is just gorgeous. Congratulations to them. Longtime Orleanians. It's called Classical shindigs really really fun to go through and don't miss and of course we had john on recently john lawrence louisiana lens 175 photos of the city's history from the historic new orleans collection love this love do you think i like this book do uh, i have it in post no, no. okay <laughs> curated by, by john lawrence looking ahead deutsch's house is presenting an austrian dinner planned by gunter preuss with an evening of viennese opera directed by richard mm. wagner go to deutscheshaus.org for tickets and uh we had i think one more photo we wanted to show you hmm looks a little familiar <laughs> I won't exactly say when that was, but it was Maison Blanche on Canal Street. Anyway, <laughs> Merry Christmas to you all, <laughs> and Happy Holidays. I love my dress, too. Thanks for watching. Programming on WYES is made possible in part by Susie and Pierre G. Villery. Public television is our passion. With so much content that WYES broadcasts and presents online, we are quite entertained and highly informed. Please join us in supporting WYES. The American Italian Cultural Center and Museum on South Peters in New Orleans offers event venue space, Italian language classes, dual citizenship and translation services, seminars, genealogy, and trips to Italy. Ciao, AmericanItalianCulturalCenter.com. This program is brought to you in part by the Eugenie and Joseph Jones Family Foundation, a local foundation proud to support education, the arts, and culture in the greater New Orleans area.